With the huge amount of stimulus the government around the world is giving out, will hyperinflation be a risk we need to take seriously? Hi guys, Stanley here. With the vaccination rollout, many investors are optimistic that the end of the pandemic is near. Although Asia Pacific are reimposing new lockdown measures, investors are looking ahead to the economy when the vaccination program can reach a critical mass. The idea is that we can finally go back to our normal life and the economy can start growing again. But with that, there is one major concern that investors and economists are voicing out now. The concern is that much of the massive stimulus plan the government around the world have been giving out are mostly funded by creating more money, magically. So the risk of uncontrollable inflation or hyperinflation might occur in major economies like the US and Europe. So what is hyperinflation anyway? Before we go any further, I would just like to say I'm not an economist and I'm going to explain it as simple as how I understand it. If you're an economist and I'm oversimplifying things, you can definitely give me a thumbs down on this video. But for the rest of you, I have spent days researching on this topic and tens of hours editing this video. I sincerely hope that you will help and encourage me by clicking that like button. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to stay up to date with our investment and stock market news every single week. Okay, now back to inflation. So in an economy, we need money for the whole system to operate. So when we work, we earn some money and that allows us to spend. Our spending will then become another person earning and they will in turn have money to spend and the cycle continues. In a normal economy, we will want to experience some small amount of inflation. That means that every year things might get just a little bit more expensive. For example, if an average meal for me today costs about $10, the next year the same meal might increase in price to $10.50, showing a 5% inflation. We will experience that in most years with our food, our transport and our housing. But why then would we want things to become more expensive over time? Remember we talk about one person's spending is another person's earning. So as things get more expensive, in general that will help improve profits in companies and they can also start paying their staffs more. So all our earnings will increase as well. On an individual level, I will feel richer as my earnings grow and I will continue to spend and not worry too much about my saving even though my real wealth have not changed at all. By not changing my spending habits, I am able to keep the economy going and stable. Basically, everybody is still staying calm and spending as usual. However, when hyperinflation happens, it means prices are going up too fast. Going back to our example of our meals, maybe instead of just increasing from $10 to $10.50, that same meal might now cost $30 and in a week's time, it could become $50. And that price increase is too steep and as it continues to become more and more expensive, I will start to notice. I might feel that if I don't buy that meal right now, it could become more expensive in the next few weeks and I would not have enough money to even feed myself. So what I'll do is I'll rush to the restaurant and buy up that meal. And because I'm just a regular guy, most people will think the same as me. So very soon, the restaurant will run out of food. The next person that come along will not be able to buy the meal that he wanted. There is demand for the meal, but no more supply. This will lead to people willing to pay an even higher price for the meal. Everybody panics and rush to buy what they need as soon as they have the money, because things might just get more expensive the next day. This is basically what happened in Germany during the 1930s and what has happened to Zimbabwe and Venezuela during the past few decades. The source of how this problem started was because their government started printing more and more money just to pay back their debts. So why do some investors think that this will happen even to major economies like the US or Europe now? The idea is because the government is pumping so much money into the financial system, it could lead to the same results. Throughout the pandemic, the Federal Reserve has increased their quantitative easing program from about $4 trillion to more than $7 trillion now, adding about $3 to $4 trillion into the financial system over the past year alone. To put that into perspective, during the global financial crisis back in 2008, the Federal Reserve only added $1 trillion into the financial system in the first year of the crisis. 
with so much money flowing into the system, this might lead to asset prices increasing from property to stock market to even Bitcoin. And we have indeed been experiencing that over the past few years. So investors are feeling richer and ready to spend when the economy reopens. We are all ready to buy, buy and buy. Demand for goods and services will be high. But because of the pandemic, some businesses have struggled and might have closed down. Some might have cut back during the pandemic just to stay afloat. This led to a drop in capacity. And when the economy reopens, we'll need some time for the capacity of these products and services to start ramping up again. So in the meantime, supply is low. And when we have high demand and low supply, this could lead to huge price increases. Thus, inflation is going to set in. The reason why some investors are worried right now is because we are already seeing such phenomenon in some sector. Prices for some raw materials are up significantly over the past year. Commodity like copper, nickel, hint, zinc and even oil are up more than 50% on average. The Philadelphia Federal Reserve has also reported that price indexes is increasing at its highest rate since the 1980s. And that is why some investors are revisiting the risk of high inflation now. Of course, I'm not arguing that hyperinflation is certainly coming. The simple fact is I do not know and no one will know for sure. Plus, the argument for hyperinflation is not something new. Many experts have been predicting it since the global financial crisis back in 2008 when the Federal Reserve started their massive quantitative easing program. However, it has not happened since. And one reason why it has not happened might be because of the status of the US dollars as a global currency. So even if the US is adding so much money into the financial system, it is not only going into their domestic economy, but rather it gets trickled down to the global economy. And as the global economy is so huge, a few trillion dollars might still end up being absorbed into the economy without much negative consequences. This is not the case for Zimbabwe or Venezuela. As this country prints large amount of money, it will reach a point where the supply of their currency overrun their demand, thus making their money worth less and less. So of course, the US has an unfair advantage when it comes to printing money to save an economy. But regardless of that advantage, there will still be a limit to how much the Federal Reserve can add into the system. It is a fine thin line to manage that limit well. And if it is mismanaged, it will have massive global consequences because of the US dollars as a global currency. Personally, I try to minimize that risk by making sure that I only invest in financially stable companies with very strong pricing power in the market. So even if inflation sets in, they will still be the one that is able to increase the prices of their product and services to offset inflation. The old assumption that cash is king might no longer stay true for investors. Anyway, what other risks are you thinking about? Do comment down below and let us know. If investing is something new to you, you can also check out our free investing course at valueinvestasia.com slash free course. You can find the link in the description below. Till we meet again, my name is Stanley, invest safely.